Rochelle, at AMT in 2011, you received the Outstanding Mathematics Teacher Educator Award for Excellence in Scholarship and gave an outstanding talk upon accepting that award. Given that not all members were present for this session, can you talk about pressing issues concerning equity in mathematics education that mathematics teacher educators might want or need to think about? Sure. Um, well, I mean, one of the things that for me, I started out with my career looking at effective math departments, and what I saw was that even in places where um, people, where teachers were able to come together as, as a math department and create spaces where marginalized youth could do well in mathematics, those places could be undermined by the politics that were happening at the time, whether it was a back to basics movement, and that wasn't just in the school that I was studying, which is Union High, but like in Railside High, which is another school people are familiar with. And so I really came more familiar with the fact that teachers need to negotiate their practice in a way. It's not just building a good um, uh, way of doing teaching, but that it's how do you interact with or buffer yourself from things that are happening outside. And so I think one of the things that um, I've been working on that I think that we need to push harder on as well as in schools of education and in terms of teacher leaders um, in professional development is thinking about the political knowledge that teachers need for teaching because we are in an era of high stakes education. Um, so we have things like the Common Core State Standards and the um, Danielson Teaching Framework, the Ed TPA. We have all these things that teachers are going to have to negotiate whether they want to or not. And other people are, are framing what counts as professional. Um, for them. And so we need ways that we can help prepare teachers for the kind of politics that they're going to deal with as teachers if they're going to advocate for um, black and Latino or, or low income youth. So I feel like um, one of the pressing concerns is how do we get teachers to develop the capacity to not just become advocates for students, but become skilled advocates for students and learn how to um, push back on the system and reclaim this profession. I know that uh, this paper and your work more generally focuses focuses on creative insubordination. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, so creative insubordination is really just how do you as a teacher, if you're dealing with the politics of what's going on in your school, how do you creatively sidestep some of the maybe policies or the narratives that are being written about students, but without getting yourself fired? So you, you're um, you're bending the rules, you're, and some of this comes up in, um, in everyday conversations. It can be things that, uh, that students say to you, uh, it could be things that, a racist comment that a colleague says to you, it could be something that's said in a, in a department meeting, um, but it's about how do you um, counter with either evidence or um, probe with another question or just choose not to enact a policy that serves as a kind of um, advocacy for students. And because so much of what mathematics is, is um, prescripted or is uh, written about in a very uh, linear and hierarchical way, anything that we do in the mathematics classroom really that is countering that idea that, um, that kids need to be learning mathematics in ways that I would say are not very humane, um, anything we do to bring more humanity back to the math classroom, anything we do that, that helps students recognize that mathematics is a human practice, that people practice it in other parts of the world, that you can use math as a uh, tool for doing things other than getting good grades in school, but maybe analyzing the uh, society, um, all those things are forms of creative insubordination um, for teachers. As we look at past work in mathematics education, we see that there are at least two strands of work that often run parallel. Um, one of these is uh, uses a cognitive framing, and the other a sociocultural or sociopolitical framing. Based on your work, what are your ideas and approaches regarding bringing these two strands together to support student learning? Well, I think I think first it's kind of helping people recognize that just like. Um, everything, there is no separation of the mind and the social. So uh, there is no way you can just study what students are thinking. There's other things that are happening. There's a context in which they're embedded um, that is influencing how they're thinking, what they attend to. Um, and so getting people first to understand that there are other things that are going on there is important, but helping them recognize that even if we just say that things are cultural or social, 
Um, also recognizing that things are political, that we make choices. So mathematics is not this neutral space that just because we're getting students to learn some new method for adding on, like how did we even choose that we were going to spend as much time as we're going to do having students focus on adding in school um, or um, other decisions. But so I think that what becomes difficult for people is that even when people have the awareness that all learning is social, and that all learning can be political, they may not agree with that, um, that it becomes, well, how do I study this? Or how do I pay attention to this because this isn't the way I think or this isn't the things that I see? And I think there, that's again where a lot of partnerships come um, into play, where you don't have to be the person who studies that, but if you're cognizant of the fact that this is something that is influencing uh, how students think, how students uh, process, different kinds of problems, then you might want to work with other people who are concerned about um, how does the nature of the context in which they're participating in influence what are the things they pay attention to and how they respond in terms of that problem. So, Okay, um, wonderful. Uh, let's switch focus a little and talk about um, a research article that you have personally found particularly useful or helpful in, in your work. In my work. Um, it's funny, I think I would go back to uh, a piece, actually I would say it's kind of two pieces. I would couple them together because I read them about the same time and they kind of play off of each other. Uh, so there's a piece by Lilia Bar Bartolome that's called Beyond the Methods Fetish and there's a piece that's by, um, I'm not sure if it's Tamara or Tamara, but it's uh, Babouf Le Fontaine mm -hmm. uh, and her piece is um, Politically Relevant Teaching. I think the first part of it is a movement beyond something, but uh, both of these pieces are talking about the need for teachers to have political clarity in their work, and I think that really affected me to read about how it's, I knew at a gut level that it's not just about the kinds of um, the right curriculum that you choose, or it's just about the great relationships that you have with students, but that part of this is part and parcel with like who you think you are and how clear you are about what it is that you're trying to do on an everyday basis so that you can be internally consistent. And so for me, those two pieces, the, the Bartolome piece is a, a little bit more of a theoretical piece that kind of lays out this argument about why all teachers need to have this way of thinking and the um, Babouf Le Fontaine piece is looking at African-American teachers at a time when schools were segregated and what were the kinds of conversations they could have with their students and what kind of clarity they could have in thinking about their teaching. And so, um, but in both of these, the it comes through that, um, that teachers need to have that clarity if they're going to be advocates for their students, if they're going to try to transform anything about education and not just um, go along with what's already happening. Mm -hmm. And what, what kind of research do you think we uh, as a field need at this point? Um, I think we need a lot. Uh, I think we need a lot more partnerships of people coming together um, and looking, studying things from um, with different lenses, but also in different spaces. So I think of people who have come together and done things across different campuses and have studied one thing, but have studied it in multiple spaces and tried to understand how does the context or the, even the researcher um, influence how what kinds of findings you can get from that. Um, I think that those of us that are trying to grapple with these issues are trying to span boundaries that sometimes are, are quite difficult to span. So it's like you're expected to be, you know, like in my work, I use um, I use Latino studies. Um, I draw on you know um, post structural and post modernist work. I draw on you know math departments and other. I mean, so there's all this work that one person has to do, and I think that that's becoming kind of untenable. I think that we need to be doing work that spans across people with people taking different lenses. Um, but I do feel like um, we have to do work that is getting back to what are our definitions of success. And I feel like it's in coming back to, for me, it's always in coming back to the students and what's going to be good for the students and which students is this good for. Um, so I'm not sure that I've answered your question about what kind of research. No, I think you did. I think that it's that you've brought up some important points about um, drawing on uh, more broadly um, on uh, theoretical framing and also on um, 
working in multiple contexts to look at particular problems. And I think mm -hmm. you, you mentioned several things that are really uh, thought-provoking. Um, so lastly, can you recommend an article that you've written and tell us why you think it is a good one for um, uh, math teacher educators to read? So I, I guess I, th I would say that there's two that that kind of connect with each other. Um, I would say the piece that I wrote in Jeremy that's called gap, the gap gazing fetish in mm -hmm. mathematics education. I think that's a good one for really helping deconstruct what is this whole discourse about the achievement gap about, and and even how does achievement gap data get crunched? And so then, what is that actually? In what ways is that limiting for us? Even if we cared about the kinds of things that achievement gaps measure, but also understanding how. Um, as teachers and as teacher leaders and as teacher educators, how do we kind of fight back on understanding what are the ways, if, if we can't articulate in what ways these are limiting, then it sounds like it's just our opinion that we don't like that people are focusing on the achievement gaps or being able to like lay out what are the specifics of how that's limiting and then offering something different of uh, a notion of advancement mm -hmm. and gains. Um, the piece that I think is is kind of parallel to that, but maybe heavier for people to read because it's longer, um, is the sociopolitical turn, which is also in JRME. Um, and I think for that, I think it's important because it lays out what are some of the um, things that we gain from thinking about things from a sociopolitical perspective, as opposed to remaining either at the cognitive level or at the sociocultural level. And it also brings up how do how do we as researchers, how does the work that we do, um, how does it make us either um, complicit or disruptive in the kinds of things that are going on right now in mathematics education? And so, for example, um, understanding how, how we even talk about um, identity or power when we name those things and are we what do we mean by those terms and what are the different interpretations and what are the implications of those different interpretations so i think it it's a good space to kind of learn a little bit more about how people who are doing this work who've been in the field and i name a bunch of people it gives you resources to go find other people who are doing this work um, it gives a good introduction to taking that socio-political turn